Good evening and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Prashansa Jain and I will be your host for this event. We're excited to have you all here today to talk about the art of reading comprehension for grades one to five. I'd like to share the norms of today before we begin this event. So to avoid any disruptions, we'll be putting all of you on mute, but the chat will be enabled for your replies. At the end, we'll also have a 10 minute questionnaire session in which you can ask your doubts. Also, please stay until the very end for a five minutes assessment. It is necessary for you to complete it in order to obtain your certificates. I hope you'll enjoy today's session. And now I would like to introduce Ms. Shafali Juneja, who is our speaker for today. Ms. Shafali Juneja. Shafali, ma'am, could you please wave to the audience so they can recognize you? Okay, so I would like to introduce Ms. Shafali Juneja. She's an educator and a soft skills trainer with over 18 years of experience in the areas of teaching, uh, teaching and curriculum design. She's currently the head of training and growth in SAR education. Without further ado, I welcome Ms. Shefali to begin with our session. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for such a warm welcome. Um, on behalf of SAR Education, I welcome all the teachers who've taken now time to participate in the workshop today. Thank you so much. And as you all know, the topic for today is reading comprehension skills. To move ahead, Sar, I will just share some assumptions with the group norms. There's going to be a lot of interaction today. There's going to be a lot of interaction within yourselves too. A lot of new information will be shared to you uh, so that you can reflect on your current practice and your knowledge. It's going to be meaningful and more relevant to you educators. You would be able to immediately put it to use. You learn it today and you're ready for it tomorrow. So you can use all the skills right from tomorrow in your classrooms. Um, and of course, you will get confidence in using these resources, the right techniques for that. And there are going to be lots and lots of takes, take, uh, takeaways for the session today. And have fun, everyone. What are we going to cover today is the reading comprehension what is reading comprehension, the comprehension skills, and the use of graphical organizers to build comprehension skills. Now, I have a question to you. Why do you read? I want you to please put in the chat box your answers. Why do you read? Or why do anyone read? Uh, do we have a response in the chat box? Everyone, the chat box is enabled for, for today, everyone, because we're going to have a lot of interaction discussion. Uh, just write in the chat box, why do you read? I see a lot of responses to gain knowledge, hobby, uh, information, enrichment. Understanding vocabulary, oh my God, this is a huge response. Again, entertainment, vocabulary enhances your skill, self-growth, writing skills, to know something, okay? For entertainment, enjoyment, okay? All right, we read for information, enhance the vocabulary, knowledge, excellent, and improve the speaking skills and writing skills too, to understand, Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Responses. I have the same response with, uh, with me here. All right. Let's have a look. So gaining information, verify existing knowledge, to find the author's purpose or idea, vocabulary enhancement, enjoyment, to build focus and improve memory, improve writing skill. That's the most important. Thank you so much for the responses, uh, everyone. I talk about the science of reading. I want to talk about the Scarborough's rope. Now, if you look at this rope, uh, I'll just take my highlighter and point out. Okay, so what you see this, this is the Scarborough's reading rope. 
So the simple, it's a very simple view of reading, which is designed in each. So it is designed in a way that each strand here in a row, so it has some skill, right? So we start from decoding. It starts from uh, phonological awareness, then phonemic awareness, which is uh, letter sound and uh, letter sound and grapheme association, sight word recognition, and then you come to the next level, which is language comprehension. So we need to build these sub skills uh, like background knowledge, vocabulary knowledge, language structure, literature, literacy knowledge, verbal reasoning, and these strands strands are woven together. So the strands are woven together. The more tightly or nicely woven these strands are, you're going to have a good reading comprehension. So it's a, it's a good blend of that. So what we do is, I'll just read it. It starts with phonics decoding, which is the science of studying sounds. So we're talking about sounds, the, the letter and sound association is taught. With that, the child starts reading. When the child starts reading, uh, he builds vocabulary and gradually he develops frequency. And then comes the understanding of the text that the child reads. That is comprehension with building up your background knowledge and of course interest plays a very important role. So we've been working on the comprehension skills today. Now the reading comprehension is a product of decoding and language comprehension. So decoding is, I said again, ability to apply sound symbols relationship to read words and um, you have language comprehension which is ability to understand spoken and written language that is equal to your reading comprehension. This simple view of reading is a theory that attempts to define the skills to contribute to early reading comprehension. According to the original theory, an individual's reading comprehension is a product of decoding skills and language comprehension. It, this, is, this, is, uh, this uh, mathematical formula was derived by Gog and Turmer in 1986. The key idea that both the ability, ability to decode and language comprehension are necessary for reading comprehension. So if any one of them is missing, for example, if you don't have the right decoding skill, which is or maybe 50% of decoding skills, you will not be able to read. If you do not have enough language comprehension, again, you would not be able to read. So if you want 100% results, it has to be 100% decoding skills, awareness of that, and 100% language comprehension is equal to reading comprehension. Therefore, your poor reading comprehension so if you have a poor reading comprehension, you go back to fluency. You have, and you have, if you have poor fluency, you go back to word recognition and it goes back again. If you have poor word recognition, you go back to phonics and decoding. And then poor phonics and decoding, you go back to phonemic awareness, which is the first level. And before that is your phonological awareness, which is the first step before teaching them the letter sounds. Now we're gonna talk about reading. Uh, and reading comprehension. What happens when the child is not able to read? In writing chat box, what happens when the child is not able to read? So when a child is not able to read, they go back to having poor comprehension skills. And also they just uh, generally lack in the class. Okay, because they can't read all the other subjects also and therefore they can't comprehend. Okay, any, any more answers? So now, uh, thank you so much for the large responses. Starting from the very beginning, English textbooks have a series of chapters with stories, essays, poems, and at the end, there are questions with respect to them. This seemingly suggests that students using textbooks are being taught reading comprehensions in English. That is not the case, my friends. Most often the teachers or the tutors read the text, explain the text to the students, uh, whatever the chapter contains. At times, they may ask the question to read the text aloud but that does not automatically develop the reading comprehension skills. I'm surprised that the neglect of the development of reading comprehension skills has not been widely noticed and acted upon. 
really comprehend is the most neglected aspect of the Indian education, and the focus needs to be particularly on the reading comprehension. We will be talking about the comprehension skills and strategies. Skills is what is the primary my focus will be today. There are multiple comprehension uh, strategies like now, what are strategies? Strategies are what you, you, you uh, take care of while you're reading the test. It is while reading. And comprehension skills are when you ask questions. This is the primary difference between both of them. Now, we will talk about just a little introduction about what are comprehension strategies. They are monitoring, monitoring comprehension, which is checking in if it makes sense. Now, the words, phrases, sentences, all these things should make sense. So, and you infer meaning, you look for cues, you look for, um, you like to read between the lines, what is the idea behind what is written there. You determine the importance, you highlight, you underline the important points uh, and the important events in them. You talk about the features in the language, you talk about questions and predictions. So there, are, and you also visualize, for example, you're reading a text, if you're able to visualize and there's an imaginary figure in your mind, that's a comprehension strategy. And then you activate your prior knowledge, you think and you remember. These are your comprehension skills. And when I talk about the comprehension skills, they are um, your uh, the skills of cause and effect, identifying text, identifying cause and effect in the, in the sentences, identifying problem and solution in the story. By reading, after reading, you compare and contrast the text that you have read, you identify genres, you identify, you identify the characteristics. You, you sequence the complete plot. So there are a lot, lot of things that could be, we'll try and cover most of the comprehension skills today. Now, when you look at the NCF document, this is an excerpt from NCF document, which talks about what needs to be covered for language and literacy development in foundation and preparatory level. So when I talk about this, if you see, um, uh, here it's written to read books with short, simple text allowed. Use both visual cues and text to infer and retell the story with accurate sequence and elaboration so that the child identifies plots and characters in the story. Now, going to the next level, which is the preparatory level, which is the grades, the higher grades. Here we talk about some important ones, applying varied comprehension strategies. If you see, I, I underline this here. To understand different texts, infer the author's intention behind writing the text, sorry, writing the text material, draws essential conclusions from the material read. So for this, you need uh, pre-writing strategies like planning, sequence of ideas, mind mapping, graphic organizers, organizers. So when we talk about the comprehension skills, we'll be using the graphical organizers to assess those skills actually. Now, to mention that this is the document is taken up from NCF document page number is mentioned here, 119 and 139. Now to move ahead. Now, please enter one thing in the chat box that you hope to know or be able to do by the end of today's webinar. I've given you a close, a very close idea. What are we going to cover today? And a little bit of introduction about what is reading comprehension, how can that be achieved, what are comprehension skills. Keeping that in mind, I want you to write in the chat box one thing that you hope to know or you'll be able to do by the end of today's webinar. Everyone, please write in the chat box. Do we have the answers? I want to know uh, reading skills or the skill, how to improve the reading skills, of course. Uh, how to implement the strategies, understand the technique, okay? The vocabulary, enhanced reading skills, special skills and vocabulary skills, words, pronunciation, more strategies, more focus on pronunciation, okay? Reading skills. We will learn how to make a child curious about reading. The art of effective reading, yes, comprehension skills. Wow, yes, we're reading the graphical organizers too. Increase confidence, fluent reading. 
Thank you so much, teachers, for answering. We've got a huge response here. Understanding all the skills, reading and speaking skills, okay? Fluency, how to make independent, how to make them independent in reading comprehension. Yes, you will certainly be able to do that. Thank you so much for your responses. Okay, let's move ahead. Now let's have a look at the comprehensive skills again. What are we going to cover? The cause and the effect, compare and contrast, draw conclusions, fact and opinion, fantasy and reality, make predictions, sequence events, character and settings, and the author's purpose. And there are many more. Now, comprehension skills test how well your child understands texts that are read, listened to, or viewed. Good readers, now you have to understand what it covers. When a child is able to uh, just read the text, do you come to know is the child understanding what is he reading or he is just parroting? Do you understand when the child reads? How do you come to know? These comprehension questions will help us to find out. These key skills will help your children answer the comprehension questions. Let's have a look at the video. I will share it again. If I don't know if I've shared the audio. Give me a second, I'll share it again. Okay, one second. All right, it goes. All right, now you compare and contrast simply means to look for similarities and differences between two or more objects. Do you have a best friend? What are some of the similarities that you and your best friend share? If you and your best friend are both girls, both have brown hair, and are both five feet tall, those are all similarities that most people can see. But what about similarities that people can't see? Those could be things like, you both love funny movies, you both love ice cream, and you both love puppies. When we make comparisons between things, we are looking for things that we can physically see, like both of you having brown hair, as well as things we can't see, like both of you loving ice cream. Have you ever read a story that reminds you of another story you've read? If so, did you make some comparisons in your mind about the two? So there's... Compare and contrast. That's compare and contrasting. Okay. Now... Everybody knows what is this, an Apple phone and an Android phone. Uh, can you all write some similarities between the Apple and the Android phone? We start with the similarities first. So one of the similarity could be that both of them have cameras. Okay, excellent. That's screen, keypad, to converse, of course. You, we, know, we, we use both the things to talk. Flash, for calling. We can make a phone call, all right. Handy. Okay, anything else? Both of them are smartphones. 
okay okay the sofa okay for shopping wow i must get this answer yes we use it both the phones for shopping iphone is status symbol okay now now can you all write the difference between the apple phone and the android phone you just given me the similarities now tell me the differences i think the top most difference would be apple is an expensive phone while androids could be affordable yes you're right prashant sir okay thank you the features okay we have the answers to in the chat box price difference yes that's the major difference different operating system difference in camera processor is different security of course sound clarity there more features in apple phone okay camera quality okay features better features in uh, iphone okay update modes are different all right okay thank you so much let's move ahead and see if i have mentioned a few points let's have a look so the differences are expensive uh, your apple is expensive whereas the android is affordable uh, updates frequently it does not update frequently uh, apple is a single manufacturer and they have there are multiple manufacturers for android phones apple is more secure whereas um, android is not that secure the operating system is ios and apple and um, but the operating system is windows and android and there are some similarities both can download apps good battery life both have gps navigators i think and so many answers everybody gave the first important answer was we use both of them to talk now teachers what i want you mentioned the comparison by telling me the differences and the similarities but there are some signal words and phrases that we use to compare and contrast So these are the sing signal signal words and phrases that you see for similarities we use similar similarly also to as well as likewise also both and we talk about differences like we said that um, but however on the other hand so for example when we talked about the iphone iphone is expensive on the other hand the android phone is is cheaper so this, like this you make similarities and differences using the signal words So I want each one of you to go to www. menti. com and use this code three four double two four seven six seven. Everyone, just go to menti. com. After that, you can paste the link in the chat box so that everybody can actually go to the chat box, take the link from there. Okay, we have the menti. dot com link there. Just go to the link, everyone. All right, I think everybody can uh, go. Uh, I can. I think everybody can visit this link. So you have to write one difference and one similarity between the iPhone and the on Android phone using the signal words like whereas, as well as. On the other hand, are you able to? Everyone, are you able to go to the link? If you're not able to go to the link, please go to menti. dot com. It's written on the slide and use the code three four double two four seven six seven.
You can also put in your sentences in the chat box. Okay. Uh, I want you to write a complete sentence and use the signal words like as well as, similarly, similar. Okay. Apple phones is expensive, whereas Android is affordable. Excellent. So here the signal word is whereas. Please go to the menti.com and use the code 34224767. iPhone is expensive. On the other hand, Android phone is affordable. Excellent. And here the, the signal word is on the other hand. Both are used to talk. Okay, both. Excellent. I repeat, please give your answers in complete sentences so that you're able to use the signal words iPhone is expensive, whereas Android phones are affordable. Okay. Both are having means of communication. However, both are having different price segment. Yes. Okay. iPhone is expensive, whereas Android is comparatively cheaper. iPhone and Android both are used for calling. We can click photographs using both the phones. Okay. Any more responses? Come on, let's try. Any, any more responses? Come on. Use as well as, use similar, but I'll be having the responses, uh, questions at the chat box too, if you can uh, just say them aloud for us. So the chat box is actually pouring with responses and they are all great and they have used the signal words in most of them. So uh, some of my favorite responses can be seen here. So the first one is actually we have already talked about it. iPhone is expensive. On the other hand, Android phone is affordable. So there is another one. Both are used to talk. Uh, so iPhones are made by a single manufacturer, whereas Android has different manufacturers. Excellent, you use whereas, okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for your responses. I think most of you are able to use these in, in, in sentences. Some of them have given the answers in the in, in Mentimeter. Some of you have given answers in the chat box. Thank you so much, everyone. Now to move ahead. The comprehension skill that we just covered was, was compare and contrast. All right. Um, okay, give me a second, please. All right, can I see everybody, please? Are the videos on? Are the videos on? Can I see everyone? For this activity, we'd like to request you to turn your videos on and I promise it's going to be fun. Thank you so much for putting on your videos. All right. Okay. Give me a second while we just start the activity. I want each one of you to stand up on your places and run in your place. Everyone. 
everyone. I can't see everyone. Um, uh, Prashansa, can you see? Pe people running? Okay, so I can see that people have stood up, but I can't see them running. Just just run at the place wherever you are, on the place. Okay, I can see Gayatri ma'am running. I can see Renuka ma'am running. I would request everyone to run on this one. It's okay, Nivedita ma'am is running with a really big smile on her face. Wow. Savita ma'am also. Okay, so okay. many smiling faces. I think running is making them smile somehow. Oh, wow. I see Silky ma'am also running. Okay, now everyone rub your hands. Okay, now we'll rub our hands. All right. 10 seconds more. Put it on your faces. Do you feel the warm air? Do you feel your warm in your hands? Yes. And when you were running at your place, what happened when you were running? Please write in the chat box. I think we suddenly got that boost of energy, but I'm interested yes, in knowing happy. what... Yeah. There is friction. And some of them hearts will be beating faster also. Energy boost. Okay. All right. Happy. Yes. Charged. Excellent. Heartbeat increases. Okay. All right. Positivity. Warm up. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's see what next we have to do. Now, you want to turn off your cameras just for 10 seconds. Put it on back, please. What happened when you turned your camera on? We were not able to see you. Isn't it? We can put on the camera's back. When you put on the camera's back, what happens? We can see you. What will happen if you are suddenly asked to leave the meeting? Just write in the chat box. What will happen if you are suddenly asked to leave the chat box? Uh, so the meeting, I'm sorry. Everyone, do we get responses? So we are getting responses such as they will feel unhappy, they'll feel confused, they will feel even disheartened. And somebody say, I would wonder why, feel embarrassed, yes. I would wonder what has happened, disheartened, disappointed. FOMO, fear of missing out, feeling confused. Insulting, yes, I'm sure you will feel that. Feel ashamed. To whom we are talking to, shocked. Yes, my friends, what am I doing with you is, when I asked you to stand up at your place and run, your heart started beating faster. You were happy, you were smiling, you were giggling, it was warmer. So when you were running was the cause and the effect was happy faces, your heart's beating faster was the effect. When you rubbed your hands, what happened? Your hands became warm. That is the effect. And the cause, what, what caused it? Rubbing your hands. When I asked you to turn off the camera, we were not able to see you. That was the result. Because of turning off the camera. And when I said, I be, when you're asked to leave the meet, meeting suddenly, you would feel disheartened, confused, not feel well. Is the result again for this? My friends, what I'll be talking about is the cause and the effect, the next skill of comprehension. That's the cause and the effect. The cause is the why and what happened is the effect. So I hope you understand when you were running at your place was the cause, it, may, it made your heart, feet, heart beat faster was the effect. When you rubbed your hand, it was the cause and the effect was your hands were warm. So there can be many effects because of one causes and many causes can have one result. Let's have a look. Now again, I would want the answers from you. 
So when you know the cause is the why and effect is what happened. So if the sun is shining brightly, what will be the result? Everyone, responses in the chat box, please. You feel hot, okay? You sweat, okay? Oh, it's a new day when sun shines. Wow, so positive. Sun beating down. Air will get warm, okay? So maybe you put on the AC, the air will get warm. You feel thirsty. So when the sun gets hotter, you feel thirsty and therefore you drink water, okay? Oh, vitamin D again, wonderful. You feel thirsty. All right. So when the sun is hot, the results are what you have given me right now. Okay. Next. So when you eat so much of food, what will happen? When you eat so much of food, then you see the you see in the picture, what will happen? You feel sleepy, lazy. I would put on weight, bloating, indigestion, lazy, lethargic, you bloat, stomach ache. Okay, you gain weight, sleepy, you become fat, lethargic, drowsiness, you might puke too, sluggish, depression, okay, stomach ache, uneasy, guilty, yes. So, and the cholesterol level will go up. So th these are all your effects. And the cause was that you're eating too much or maybe not at the right quantity. Thank you. When it rains, when it is cloudy, what happens? So when it, rains, when it rains, yeah, when it rains and it is cloudy, I feel like having pakoras and chai. Can that be an effect? Of course. Pleasant feeling. You dance like a peacock. Wow. There may be thunder and lightning. A good swing. You feel refreshed. You feel like drinking coffee. Dancing outside, very happy. Okay, you feel like going for a long drive. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, so the responses that you're giving me are all the results, all the effects when it rains. Okay. Now, how to recognize the cause and the effect? So cause is the why and effect is the what, the result. And there are signal words and phrases for causes and the effects. So when you're giving the effects, you can use these words on the right side, which is the effect words. Here, so, does, therefore, hence, consequently, accordingly, as a result, then. If you're giving us the causes, you can talk about these cause words, which is the reason for, on account of, since, due to, when, because, and if. Now again, everyone, please go to mentimeter.com and use this code. Everyone, we're going to have a nice activity again. You will all write causes for the effects there. The effect, is, the effect is mentioned there in the picture, in the form of a picture. Everyone. Um, Akita, can we put the link in the chat box for this menti link, please? For this menti meter? Yes, I sent the link.
The link is already in the chat box. Can I request uh, Akita ma'am to please share the link again in the chat? There is no question. Give me a second while I share the screen. I think you'll be able to see the question now. Can everybody see the question? Right causes for the shown result. So there's a nice space tree on the right side. Can you all see if you can tell me, please? All right. It's unhealthy. Okay. We would want you to write the causes here. So when you made this beautiful, uh, yummy, uh, beautiful looking pastry, how would you make that? What caused it? I did a course last week for bacon, and therefore I was able to present such a lovely, uh, yummy piece of pastry. So when you see that, I talked about a, a signal word, which is therefore. So please use the signal words to show us the cause, everyone. Okay, pastry with spices can cause bloating as spices are there. Okay, so that's what was the picture. I take that. So you collected the biggest ingredients from the market. And as a result, you have this uh, yummy looking uh, pastry. Okay, thank you so much for the response. Do we have some response in the chat box also, Prashansa? Not really. I think everybody is using the Mentimeter, but I can see that some people are craving for the pastry. That's not <laughs> what we were really going for. But I like the responses uh, that said on the Mentimeter. Also, the uh, one that made the most sense to me was that we got different ingredients from the market. So we have this pastry. Yes. Delic the wonderful, the delicious topping was a reason for me devouring it. Okay. So it could be a cause of diabetes, okay. It's tasty, makes children feel happy, okay. All right. When it look when it looks palatable, consequently, consequently, I have to eat it. Wonderful, you use the word consequently as a signal word here. Excellent. We're still waiting for responses. I love to bake, therefore I prepare a pastry. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think this can also be a cause. The urge and the craving to have something delicious. That's why I have baked a pastry. Excellent, yes. 
That's why. Therefore. Hence. Does. So. As a result. Then. Okay. Thank you so much. I stop sharing. Okay. Now, these are the kind of graphical organizers which you can use teachers in the classroom to put in your causes and the effects here. So you put the causes and the effect, you put the causes here and the effect, and the vocabulary that you can use is also mentioned in these templates of the graphical organizer, organizers. Would you like to have these graphical organizers in the classroom? I'm sure everybody would say yes. Now, another question. Look at this picture and guess. This is a book. This is a book cover of one of our chapters from Smile English book, right? Harold the Hungry Brand. Now try and guess what the story would be about. Everyone. Try. Write in the chat box again. Looking at the cover page, we always guess what is the story all about. A picture plant, yes. Okay, wonderful response. What else? A boy and I his think favorite candy. Is, from the yes. title, I can guess this is about a plant that gets hungry often and it also seems like it is fond of jelly beans. Thank you, Prashansa. A child and a plant friendship, yes. A plant who's hungry. Okay. Plants need water. Another picture now. Now, any more responses when you look at the second picture of the story? The story is about a friendship of a plant and a picture plant and a girl. Oh, needs of a plant. Okay. What does a plant need to grow? Okay. How to feed a plant? So as you move ahead and you go through the pictures, you have more evidences. You've got more clues to predict what is there in the story. Let's have a look to the third picture that we have. Another one. All right. Would you like anything? Would you like to add anything more to what you said earlier? Some more guesses. The girl is reading about the plant and having plant is happy to eat. Yes. Okay. All right. Craving for his favorite food. Oh, that's nice. All right. So move ahead now. Now, what are we doing? We're just making predictions by looking at the cover page of a storybook or some pictures from within the story. Some of you said, I think the text is going to be about a hungry plant because the title says that. I predict that the text is going to be a story of a girl who loved plants. I think there is some connection of the plants and the candies as per the cover page. I predict that the text is going to be a fiction story because the plant can express, can talk. I think the girl has kept the plant for the first time and refers to a manual to take care of it. This is how we make predictions. Predictions can be done before reading. It's also a strategy, a comprehension strategy. Predictions can be done before reading. Well, when, when you're just looking at the pictures, the cues, and you're guessing what the story is going to be about, while reading, because once you start reading, there are more you you get you get known to the text. There are some more pictures. Then you move ahead in your prediction and add more evidences to pre present your thoughts. And after reading, 
When you finish reading, you kind of compare with what you had thought earlier. Was it same? Was it totally different? Or was it close to what you had predicted? This is what we are predicting is. We use information from graphics, text, and experiences to predict what will be read, viewed, and heard. Predicting helps us to think ahead while reading and to anticipate information and events in the text. Readers use their own experiences to make a prediction. The prediction will change as more information is available. You reflect and then you evaluate your prediction in the end. This is what another skill is, which is called predicting. Now, everyone just, um, I'll play a small video of the story. Jack is a poor boy I hope who lives hear. with his mom on a farm in a small village. Prashant, are you able to hear? Um, is everyone able to hear, please? I'm able to hear it very clearly. I'll, I'll play that again now. Jack is a poor boy who lives with his mom on a farm in a small village. She tells Jack to sell their only cow for food. Instead, Jack trades the cow for magic beans. Jack's mom is very angry and says that the beans are not magic. But Jack plants the beans anyway. The next day, a huge beanstalk has grown in Jack's yard. Jack climbs the tall beanstalk. Up and up he goes until he discovers a huge castle at the top, sitting on a cloud. Jack enters the castle and finds a giant sleeping inside. He also finds a goose that lays golden eggs. Jack takes the goose. The giant wakes up and chases Jack. He tells Jack that he's going to eat him. He chases Jack down the beanstalk. But Jack cuts the beanstalk down and the giant falls. Jack and his mom are no longer poor because the goose now lays golden All right, eggs that was for them. A story about a Jack and the beanstalk. Are you ready? Where is the story taking place? Is, it, is it my first question. That is the part of the status setting. I'm talking about the describing the story structure. Where is the story taking place? It's taking place in. The answers, please. On a farm in a small village. Who is the main character or the, the characters in the story? So it could be the main character could be Jack or the Jack's mom or the giant. So the answer is Jack. What problem does the character have? Many problems. Jack was poor. Jack's mom was angry as he traded the cows for some beans. Giant chases Jack. Now, we put all these information in this graphical organizer, the characters, the setting, the problem, and the solution. Now, I'll play another story for you, for the jag, the ant, and uh, the grasshopper. The Ant and the Grasshopper Chirp, chirp, I love summer Chirp, chirp, I love singing Sang Grasshopper, resting on a tree on a hot summer day While under the tree Ant was sweating and slaving away. Hey, Ant, life is too short to work so hard. <laughs> Grasshopper said to Ant, because Ant was working all summer long. Listen, Grasshopper, if you don't prepare for winter now, you're going to starve. Heave-ho! Oh, there's plenty of time. Why worry? I'm going to go back to my singing now. 
Chirp, chirp. In no time, summer went and the freezing winter came. The wind howled and howled, and buckets of snow fell from the winter sky. Oh, oh, oh I'm so hungry. Oh, I'm so cold. What if Aunt is right, and I starve to death? Grasshopper went to look for food. But instead of finding food, he got lost in the snow. And he could barely move his legs anymore. Luckily, Grasshopper found Ant's house. He mustered up a... Don't worry, Grasshopper. I have plenty of food. Come on in. Grasshopper went inside. He sat next to the fire and ate until he couldn't eat any more. This is delicious. Aunt, I'm really sorry for making fun of you before. All right, now after, after you look, after you view the story. We can determine the theme here by talking about the characters. So if you look at the, how many characters were there. The grasshopper and the, the ant. What did the characters do? The ant helped the grasshopper in this time of need. What did the characters learn from the events in the story? The grasshopper learned that the hard work and the preparation are important for a successful future, and being lazy or responsible can lead to negative consequences. And how can you apply that in your life? Is I can apply this to my everyday life by working hard and being responsible. So this is again, we talk about now, now, now we can talk about the facts and, and sharing your opinion. What were the facts in the story? Ants and grasshoppers are insects. Ants are found everywhere on earth. Grasshopper has long, powerful legs for jumping. And grasshoppers generally green in colors. And some of the opinions that I have is what I think or I believe. I think the grasshopper looked active, so should have saved for the rainy day. I think there was an army of ants, that's why they could save food, and the grasshopper was alone. This is a graphic organizer or to work out the skill for fact and opinion. Let's have a look at the other one. When you talk about the sequencing of events, and you also have these transition words to be taken care of while you're answering this question, or when you're sequ sequencing the events in a row. First, the grasshopper sang, enjoyed, and rested under a tree. Then it saw the ant working hard to collect food for the winters. Next day, ant saw the grasshopper wasting its time. It warned the grasshopper about the winters. Later, when winter arrived, the grasshopper did not have anything to eat. Finally, the ant helped the grasshopper with food, and the grasshopper learned a lesson. So when you look at these transition words here, you, you see first, then, next day, later, finally. These are all your transition words where you can talk about when you're sequencing events. Now can we all read out some passages and find out some skills by identifying a few sentences? Let's have a look. Now I want the answers from the audience. They can read it for say 30 seconds and identify any sentence here to portray your skill, maybe a cause and effect, maybe a compare and contrast, a problem or a solution, prediction, any, any skill. I can read that out for you. Once upon a time, a, great, a girl named Cinderella lived with her stepmother and two stepsisters. Poor Cinderella had to work hard all day long to the so the stepsisters could rest. It was she who had to wake up each morning when it was still dark and cold to start the fire. It was she who cooked the meals. It was she who kept the fire going. The poor girl could not stay clean from all the ashes and cinders by the fire. What a mess! Her two stepsisters laughed, and that's why they call her Cinderella. So, can we have the responses? Problem: The stepsisters teased Cinderella. Okay, Cinderella is the main correct character. Hard work on time. Okay.
Okay, so when you will have underlined once upon a time, what does this tell you? About what kind of a story you're reading? Yes, it's a fairy tale. Okay, then the next one that I've highlighted is poor Cinderella had to work hard all day long so the stepsisters could rest. What is this skill here? Come on, poor Cinderella had to work hard all day long so the stepsisters could rest. Okay, the cause and the effect, excellent. And there are many more that you can take out from the text and I have a lot of answers here. Yes, compare and contrast also. She's working hard, Cinderella's working hard while the stepsisters are resting. Yes, thank you. Now the next one, the next para, please. Just we can silently read this and also at least find out one skill, one sentence for any one skill here. Shefali, ma'am, could you please move the box further to the right? Okay. Is that visible? Yeah, now we can read it. Can you read out the answer? Because I can't see now, Vishen, sir. So we are receiving a lot of answers on the chat. So somebody has written hard work, hard work pays. That could be the moral of the story. It teaches us to be patient also. Hmm. Okay, so I've highlighted this. I wish I could go to the ball too. Then poof, all of a sudden in front of her was a fairy. You called, said the fairy. What do you think this is? I think the from this, we can predict what happens next in the story. Okay. All right. I take that. Anything else? She wished and a fairy appeared in front of her. A problem and a solution or maybe a cause and the effect too. Okay. You had the third passage here. Can you figure out anything from here? She tapped her wand again and at once a beautiful carriage came with a driver and four white horses. What is this again? From okay. this, I can predict that Cinderella's life would get better. All right. Any more responses? Compare and contrast, okay. Kindness will be rewarded, okay. Problem and solution. Being positive. Mm -hmm. Someone has also mentioned that she will get the solution to her problems. Okay. So uh, what I am trying to say, everyone educators here, is that you can uh, draw out skills from any text that you read. So and the teachers, it's our responsibility so that we ask questions based on the skills. Only then the children will be able to answer us accordingly. We've used a lot of graphical organizers. Would you, each one of you, like to have the graphical organizers in your classroom so that you can just take a printout and give it to your children so that you can test their skills? Okay, can we have the answers? 
Do you all want these graphical organizers? Yes or no? Yes, thank you so much. With this, uh, we kind of wrap up our comprehension. There are many more comprehensions, but this is what we could cover in this, uh, in this duration, actually. There are a lot many more that we can cover, but if you just have a look at, at this QR code, you can download the templates for the graphical organizers. If you just scan the QR code, you will be able to download all your graphical organizers that we've just used, all of them. If you've all downloaded with this week, we kind of wrap up the session now uh, and we have time for question and answer now. So if you have any questions related to any content in the session, please, please feel free to type them in the chat box and we will try to answer all of them to the best of our capability. Shafali ma'am, so I have a question and it's been going on in my mind since we started this session. Could you please help me understand what is the difference between comprehension strategies and comprehension skills? All right, thank you. Strategies are consciously employed during reading to help construct meaning, whereas the skills we test after the text is read actually. Skills are the abilities that can be used after reading to answer questions about the text, actually. The strategies are not easily accessible or measurable, whereas the skills can be assessed and measured through these graphical organizers. So strategies are during reading and skills are after reading. That certainly answers my question. And I can see on the chat that all the participants are very excited and thankful to you. You can see in the chat box yourself what they have to say. And of course, it was a wonderful session. It was very informative. And I would like to again request if you have any questions, please send them on the chat box. Okay, so somebody says that we would like to implement these strategies with immediate effect. And I also must say that we must do this. That was what uh, the session was about. Also, somebody is asking this really nice question that how can we increase interest for reading in our children? So Shefali ma'am, would you have any suggestions for that? Surround them with a lot of reading material. Uh, suggest the right book uh according to the age actually so depending on what age your child is you must suggest maybe they if the child is in a primary primary session then you can suggest them some decodable readers so find out uh some important uh, decodable readers like you can use our fitzroy readers or uh, which sar um, you know distributes so you can use the fitzroy readers that's a wonderful way of which is where which are actually decodable and easy to understand, age appropriate, and they're wonderful decodable readers. There is also another eye-catching question that how can we help the children who are not able to read the passage in terms of, you know, uh, tough vocabulary? Okay, so always when you, when you are giving them a text, please find out those tough vocabulary words. Uh, introduce them, introduce to them before you give them the passage maybe. Uh, make them known to that word by telling them the meaning, also making them visualize what is this through a sentence structure, also giving them um, a little more information about the word and you can, you can find out the difficult words from the text and then introduce them before you actually give them the reading material. 
I can see that on the chat, everybody is really thankful. And I also want to thank you, Shafali ma'am, for such a wonderful and informative session.